Hey guys, Derek and Paula here from a guy, a girl, in a camper van. So we're out at the garden because today we're going to harvest some of our corn. And then we're going to show you one of our favorite ways to cook corn on the cob. I think it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> I don't think we're getting any corn. It's going to work, I promise. Okay, okay. We're going to eat some corn. Yeah, it's going to be delicious. We're going to go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to eat some damn corn. <laughs> All right, so why do you think our corn is dead? <laughs> I think it's dead because it's brown. And most brown things are dead. <laughs> so I'm a farmer and I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, so okay, I'll explain. This looks all like dead. And then this down here looks all dead. Oh, there's a beetle. Oh, see? <laughs> and the beetles are eating it, so it's gotta be dead. <laughs> And then look. Okay. Ugh, that, dead. That cob is looking pretty dried out. So we had uh, a bit of a misunderstanding about when our corn is supposed to be ready to harvest. Um, this is our first time ever growing corn, so we didn't really know what we were doing. Big surprise. <laughs> but we just did some research and we determined that there is one foolproof way of knowing when your corn is ready to be harvested. So if we look at this one. You can see here this the strings or this the silk a lot of people call it this stuff right here whenever the corn is young this will all be uh white uh or sort of slightly yellowy green but once it's it's ready to be picked it starts turning dark brown or, or almost black like this and kind of dried out and crunchy once it's no longer wet and sticky and it's all dried out like this uh this dark color that's a sure sign that your corn is ready to be picked any earlier than that and your corn is actually uh, not going to be quite at its fullest potential so all of our corn currently has this stuff on it which is a good sign but we also have corn that looks like this and that's clearly all the husks are all dried out uh, this corn is probably past its prime it's still looks pretty yellow but you can see that all of the kernels are are all dried out they're a little little wrinkly down in here so this one is probably going to be pretty disgusting not to the groundhogs or the bunny rabbits no they'll eat it so i figure we've got about six no we've got eight we've got eight corn plants and each one uh, seems to have one or two cobs on it so i'm hoping that we get at least maybe 10 or 12 hopefully a dozen uh, cobs of corn that are actually edible um, but if not as long as we get one each this is our first year everything that we did this year was basically just an experiment so if we even just get one cob of corn each that's still gonna be friggin awesome so we'll start with this cob this one actually seems to have two on it not sure what that's all about but whenever you harvest them apparently you want to pull down slightly and then kind of twist and that We'll harvest it without damaging it so i'm told so one mm, small cob of corn and one nearly microscopic cob of corn <laughs> huh all right that's okay let's peel this one <laughs> look at this <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one didn't quite work. <laughs> okay, so here's something really interesting that I just learned today. And we may talk about this a little bit more next year whenever we hopefully have a slightly larger success with our corn. But apparently each one of these little strings, the silk that grow at the end of the cob, each one of these are connected to one of these kernels. So whenever the corn actually gets fertilized, it's because some of the pollen lands on each one of these little strings. And whenever it lands on the string, that pollen then causes one of these kernels to grow. And so if you ever have any corn that's missing one or two kernels, it's because that string apparently didn't get any or at least not enough pollen. Which means <laughs> that this one apparently got almost no pollen. Because <laughs> we have we have like 17 kernels on there. Well, hopefully the rest turn out far better than this one does. Right there. All right. That looks like it's not done either. Yeah, see some of the kernels here, or some of the uh, strings here are still, are no, still that's white. not good. So that one, but not it also kind of, it almost looks like something ate a bunch of the ends. So maybe that's why they're not po getting pollinated. 
I don't know, we're gonna have to do a bunch of research about this corn. This is gonna be one of our lessons learned for next year. All right, why don't you try and harvest one? Okay. <laughs> Down and twist, twist at the same time. Yep. I did it. You did do it. Oh, it's tiny. Let's oh, see. it's really tiny. Can I open it? Sure. Okay, ready? Yep. Oh! Oh, that worked. We've got corn. <laughs> we sure do. It's a baby. It's a tiny little corn. That's adorable. Okay. So we're gonna harvest the rest of these cobs and then we'll show you what we end up with at the end. So here's our full harvest and I counted them and we've actually got about two dozen cobs of corn. When you consider that some of them are this small, I think when it comes to actual edible corn, we're gonna be lucky to even have half a dozen. But that's okay. because so we're gonna take these up to the house and we're gonna show you one of our absolute favorite ways to cook corn on the cob. But first, we're gonna have to light a campfire. So our fire's going pretty good now, but it's not actually the flame that we need to cook the corn. We actually need the coals. So I'm gonna let this burn down until we have a nice bed of red hot coals, and then we can put the corn on. But in the meantime, Paula's been getting our corn ready to put on the fire. So let's see what she's up to. Now we fill a bucket with water because we're about to soak the corn. That's probably good because once the corn gets in there, it'll start to overflow. So at this point, some people like to add in some sugar or some salt just to season the corn. This is totally optional though. You really don't have to do this part. But we're gonna add some sugar. To... That's probably good. So now you put all of the corn in the bucket and basically the only important part here is to make sure that all of the corn is actually submerged in the water. So now that all the corn's in the bucket, we're gonna leave it for about an hour or two. But if you don't have a bucket or you don't have the time to wait, then you don't even need to do this step. We've done it both ways with soaking and without soaking. And honestly, we barely even notice a difference. So if you don't have the time or the bucket, then move on to the next step. So the fire's burnt down pretty good now, so I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit and then we're gonna put the corn on. So this is a pretty good bed of coals. You can't really tell because it's not dark out, but uh, trust me, this is incredibly hot. <laughs> So now we just literally put the wet corn directly into those coals. There we go, that's enough for this round. So now we've got a bunch of the corn spread out on the hot coals and we're gonna leave it there for about 20 to 30 minutes. We don't want it to burn, so we're gonna use these long tongs to flip it fairly often. But don't stress out about it because this is campfire corn. A little bit of charring is fine, you just don't want it to be burnt completely. Just checking to make sure you're doing it right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think these are done. So I'm gonna scoop them up into this bowl and then we'll check them out. go all right so now we'll pull out one of these guys and peel back some of that husk look at that now we got a little bit of the 
the caramelization on here with the char and that actually gives it a lot of extra flavor so that's not a bad thing and then the rest of the corn actually looks pretty good nice and yellow it's not a really big co uh, cob of corn but still looks pretty delicious so now you can you can use this as a handle if you want to, to hold the corn or you can break it off it's up to you i'll just leave it on though i think for now there we go now a little bit of salt not bad considering we grew that ourselves that's pretty darn good so we're going to finish the rest of our corn but if you give this a try let us know what you think in the comments and if you've got another way that you like to make corn let us know that as well but otherwise We'll see you again next week. Ivan, like the char, it's really good. Mm hmm Yeah, I like it a lot. It tastes smoky. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. One take. Blueberry. <laughs> Stop. <laughs>